Well, the Nigeria Police has announced the immediate commencement of a counter-terrorism incident simulation exercise codenamed Operation Darkin Gagawa to equip its men on necessary training in the event of any attack. Reacting to the U.S. Embassy in Abuja's security advisory on increased terror alert, Force Public Relations Officer Olumiwa Adejabi says the Inspector General of Police, Usman Akali Baba, has ordered police commanders in the nation's capital to re-strategize security management within their jurisdiction. He adds that the force headquarters will continually avail them with required support to provide safety to all in Nigeria and assures FCT residents to go about their daily activities without fear. In furtherance of his zeal and strategic strategies to decimate activities of non-state actors and other criminal elements in the federal capital territory and other parts of the country, and to analyze and de-escalate threats gathered from various intelligence at the force exposure, U.S. advisory inclusive. The Federal General Police has announced the immediate commencement of a counter terrorism incident simulation exercise, code named Operation Daki Gagawa. The exercise will involve diversion of traffic, use of ground combination, and other operational manpower and assets, and is designed to improve interoperational ability and synergy between different units and formations of the Nigerian Police Force in response to terrorist incidents and other violent crimes. Well, no fewer than eight schools have been shut down in Plato State over attacks and killings by armed gangs and terrorists. Bandits have been terrorizing residents of Wase local government area in the past few months, with the latest being an attack by gunmen in that's a, the Nyalon community, which led to the killing of the village head and two others. And some parents in the affected communities describe the closure of the schools as unfortunate. All right, two security experts join us now for more on these issues. Mike Jofo is a former director of uh, DSS and Shei Adita is a security expert and uh, an intelligence uh, consultant. Thank you both of you gentlemen for joining us on News Night tonight. Let me start with you, Shea Detayo. Uh, what you make of this, um, you know, security alert coming from the U.S. Uh, government? Uh, many are saying, why this kind of engagement directly with the Nigerian public? Why not with the security experts? What are your thoughts, especially the security um, agencies, of course? <laughs> And um, also, Barrister, uh, my, my, my guy <laughs> um, in the studio there. Good evening, sir. Um, let, let me first of all clear here on this. Um, American uh, government, through its embassy, issued the, the release or the alert to its citizens. If you send a copy, the copy states that you are receiving this because you are registered with the embassy. So it is a periodic release that um, the embassy used to, you know, give as an advisory to its citizens. So we have Nigerians and Americans probably that have received it and tried to share it. And a few hours after that, we saw that the, the British and Canadian High Commission also issued the same thing to their own citizens. It is not meant for Nigerian consumption. However, um, we've already turned it into a major issue and uh, it's becoming, you know, a subject of a national debate. But we need to understand this. These are periodic release. It is not necessarily because they have credible intelligence that something is going to happen. It is what we call in intelligence, purely intelligence appreciation or an estimate. It is a product of analysis or trend or patterns of events over time you now use it to predict eh, probability or likelihood of that thing happening. It's not because American government has something credible that uh, an attack is going to happen in Nigeria. And that's the reason why it was issued to its staff. Also, I want us to understand something. When election is coming, uh, getting closer, American embassy used to you know, reduce their staff strength to those that are having critical assignments in the country. And in order for them to 
be able to let the citizens understand that, well, we may not be able to provide you as much uh, consular service as you require. This, we are issuing this. At times, it is about them trying to tick the box. Don't, we shouldn't forget that um, an incident happened in Benghazi and it led to a major debate, you know, in the U.S. as to what effort the consular, the security uh, department of the U.S. embassy in, in uh, Libya did to prevent that and also to advise his, you know, his people on that. And, um, you know, we we have it uh, from what I've read and things I've seen that that was also actually an advancement. So I see more or less like someone here trying to tick the box. That event, in case something happened, uh, you will not say that we have not actually advised. We've seen uh, some occurrences in, in, of recent time that may likely, you know, Let's when you look at it from the this conversation. Part. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> we also have... Uh, who you referred to as a senior colleague, Mr. Barry Sadia, for thank you so much for being on the news tonight. Uh, uh, Mr. Adetai just buttressed what the Nigeria Secret, Secret Police said, that this information, we also have it. However, we did not release it so that we do not cause panic. Uh, but one, what does that say to you? Two, in recent times in Nigeria, we've seen that it's not a lack of intelligence, but what we do with, with the intelligence. A quick example is that of Kujay Prison. At least 44 reports were told we are available before Kuje, but we did not stop Kuje. So you're calling for calm. On the other hand, should Nigerians really be calm, given what happened to Kuje? First, said your fault. Go yeah. ahead. Um, see, I completely agree with uh, Shei in his uh, analysis. The advisory was actually meant for foreign nationals, the American citizens, the British citizens, the Canadian citizens. Uh, you bear in mind that um, there's exchange of intelligence between the other agencies, international agencies, like the America, uh, American uh, agencies and uh, the Nigerian government. So what the, the, the alert or the advisory is seeking to make the people conscious of the environment. Like uh, uh, she said, you know, we're approaching elections. There have been series of uh, attacks in uh, Nigeria. I think uh, the issue of uh, uh, Apostle Suleiman, which was the most recent. You look at the issue of uh, Uba. So these estimates, these estimates are there. And uh, it gives warning to people to be conscious. It doesn't stop at just, you know, the advisory to the American citizens and the Canadian citizens of other foreign nationals. It also calls on our citizens, Nigerian citizens, to be on the alert. Like the SSS did mention, we remain calm because they are uh, on top of the situation. There is exchange of intelligence between these agencies and there's need for us. We don't need to leave all these uh, activities to the security agencies. Security is a collective responsibility of everybody. So we must be ready to offer information, be on the alert, be vigilant, and see how we can check uh, this situation because uh, we cannot sweep it uh, under the carpet. Right. So, uh, Adetayo, well, the Nigeria police, uh, since uh, the U.S. gave this security uh, alert, seems to have, um, you know, gone into some kind of action. Operation Darkin uh, Gagawa uh, to equip its men on necessary training and, of course, in the event of any uh, attacks. How exactly do you think, especially as we, you know, inch towards the elections, how best should our security agencies uh, handle not just the alert from the uh, U.S. Embassy, but generally to, you know, to give comfort to Nigerians that they'll be safe as they go into the elections? And do you think there's any link, really, between this alert and the upcoming elections? Well, um, to be candid, I can assure you that... Um this operation that uh, the police are carrying out is something they've already planned before now. It is not just that now. They have their, their program ahead of the election, and a lot is already going on. And when you see uh, such information permeated through, you know, the environment, it's important that um, security forces try to uh, create some uh, comfort 
by letting people see this is like showing if we'll tell you we're doing something and we don't show you that we're doing something you may not believe us so we are ready and that is what they are they are showing and that is from the police because police actions are usually physical uh, the intelligence agencies are also kind of there uh, desperately and they have their own programs which they may not uh, actually reveal and one thing i want you to understand is that um, addressing terror related incident is not something you wake up to do overnight it's something you will have planned over over the time and a lot has been planned long before now that they are carrying out and um and i can assure you that uh, nowhere in the world is um, security and intelligence activities 100% um, accurate. Uh, but the fact remains that uh, with what they have put in place, if uh, we are expected to have possibility of having like say 10 attacks, their efforts will probably reduce it to one or maybe one and a half. Let me put it put it that way. Maybe one way or the other something might slip through the finger. But um, this particular one is not the first time that the uh, the U.S. Embassy is issuing this. In fact, this year alone, we've seen like three. I think this is the fourth one. They are issuing to their citizens and none. In fact, in the last three years, all these uh, estimates have not actually come to pass. And you, you, you shouldn't also forget that there was a time they said that by 2015, Nigeria will no longer exist. It's also an estimate because of the same patterns of events over the years. And they believe that if we continue on that progression, all the forces, both the Centripeta, Centrifuga forces, will lead to, you know, to a catastrophic end of the nation. But things did not play you know, along that path. And today we are here today. So it doesn't mean that when it comes to the US, then it is uh, cast in stone. God has spoken, it must be. But at the same time, because of what Barista, you know, from what uh, um, Barista Jofor said, we have seen some activities of recent that we also make Nigerian government also to be cautious. And that's why if you see the DSS statement, there are a lot of caution in that statement. They are letting you to understand that we need to be calm. And also, they are not disputing the fact that something may happen. And that's why they are showing us that they are leaving those stone on turn. So um, we are in the perilous period and the people that are against this country, they are not sleeping. Mr. Jeffo, um, we've seen the police carrying out this Named oppression, even though she had I said this has been in the works. What should we be doing as a government, as a society, and as individuals at this time? Yeah, I think, uh, like uh, she said, uh, three days ago, I witnessed the uh, patrols mm -hmm. of the police and the checkpoints, you know, on my way home because I normally close late. And uh, I suspected, you know, things like this are coming up. Uh, so I think. Uh, what you should be doing now on the part of the citizens of this country okay. is to be vigilant, be alert. Then on the part of the security forces, they need to up their games, okay. you know, to see that uh, these uh, actions, even when they are uh, planned, are frustrated or brought to a halt. Then on the part of government and politicians, this is the right time for our politicians to mind what they say, be cautious of it. Avoid all divisive, inflammatory, and inciting statements. Okay. You know, they should be guided. And that's why I think um, the INEC has also resummoned these uh, politicians to remind them of the peace pact okay. that was uh, already signed and the need for them to play by the rules. Because the politicians are the people causing the problems. They inflame passion, they see divisive things, and uh, you know, bring up issues that divide the country. And it's based on this trend you know, that uh, the United States is making this anal analysis, despite the fact that there have been exchange of intelligence between Nigeria and the United States government. Thank you so much. Uh, Mike Ejiofo is the former director of the Department of State Services, and Sheya Detayo is a security and intelligence expert. We thank both of you for sharing your thoughts on this uh, story tonight with us. Much appreciated.